This is a $1,000 watercolor commission. Now I know what you're thinking. What? A grand for watercolors? I might even be getting some groans and eye rolls. Ow, oh, my eyeballs. Like who does she think she is charging that much for this painting? Or it doesn't look like it's worth $1,000 to me. <laughs> Trolls, be gone. It might sound like a lot, or maybe it sounds like not enough. Either way, I feel like this is the perfect opportunity to discuss a hot button topic for artists. And it's the dirty word that makes all artists recoil in embarrassment and discomfort. Pricing. So in this video, I'll take you through my process of painting this piece, how I set my commission rate, and by the end of the video, you'll understand why this particular painting was priced the way it is. And if you're interested in selling your own artwork, how to go about pricing your artwork and setting your rates. Today I'm painting something for a special client. It's gonna be a Sleeping Beauty inspired piece for an independently owned ballet studio in the Netherlands. And I'm gonna be extra, extra on this because I know that hundreds of baby ballerinas will be walking up and down the halls of the studio seeing this piece before they enter ballet class. Luckily for me, this client is a dream client and has given me artistic liberty to do whatever I want. It's basically a unicorn. How did I find this amazing client? I'll tell you exactly how in a minute, but first, let's get back to the topic of numbers. Where did the $1,000 price tag come from? Did I just pick a number out of a hat? How did I come up with that valuation? And above all, how do I get clients who appreciate what I do so much that they're willing to make the investment into my craft? When I came back to painting in 2015, and I say back because while I've always loved drawing and painting, my professional training and career took me to the graphic design world in New York. I had spent many, many years doing work exclusively on the computer for very large brands and consumer packaged goods. So much so that I was feeling really burnt out and desperately missed the feeling of paper, art supplies, and paint on my fingers. Basically the entire reason why I entered a career in the creative business to begin with. So I decided to take up drawing and painting again during my free time, but this time as a hobby. After making a few paintings and setting up an Instagram page to share my art with other people with similar interests, I started getting some requests from strangers to paint portraits or other custom pieces for them. But there was a big problem. Nobody wanted to pay for it. I was really perplexed and disappointed when my first offers were really low and I didn't know what to do to get customers to believe in the value of what I did. But then, as I started to think about it, I remembered the many years that I spent designing for Fortune 500 brands, from Pepsi to Nabisco, from L'Oreal to Bacardi, pretty much all of my clients had one thing in common. They had a brand. Now you might be thinking, I'm not Pepsi or Coca-Cola, I'm an artist. Even as an artist, there is a brand and you are the brand. And it's weird to think about it that way, but seriously, your style, the amount of time you've been doing this, the type of supplies that you use, your story, your history, all these factors add up to who you are and that kind of makes you a brand. And here's the thing, these are all things that can be leveraged. Leverage to use something that you already have, such as a resource, in order to achieve something new or better. You know, as artists, we often fall into the trap of thinking, if I build it, they will come. But let me tell you, I don't think that's correct, and that's not my mantra personally. My mantra is find your people and make cool things for yourself, and if they love you, they'll love what you make. A lot of people fall into the trap of following what everyone else is doing, or what you think everyone else expects you to be doing. And it's really, really easy to get caught up in trying to please everyone around you or conforming to the latest trends and expectations. But in my opinion, there's nothing more fulfilling than making art that reflects who you are as an individual. And if you stay true to yourself and create art that resonates with your own passions and your own interests, that's when you'll truly start to blossom, not just as a good technician, but as a good artist. And get this, part of that is knowing and accepting that you won't please everyone. Not everyone will love what you do. Not everyone loves my style. I get plenty of people saying my art looks kitschy 
or it looks corny, or my figure drawing is weak. I mean, look at these long giraffe leg ballerinas. Is this Da Vinci-esque in accuracy? And uh, no. Nope. But what it is, is unmistakably mine. And here's where that ideological mind shift becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. When you infuse your unique voice and your perspective into your creations, that's when you'll start to attract your true tribe. The people who genuinely connect with your art and you as a person and who appreciate it. And these are the people who will support you and be willing to invest in your art and become your biggest fans. And this selective focus is the same for pricing. And it took me a while to get there. I finally learned to have the confidence to value myself. And sometimes that means saying no. All right, I know you're dying to get into the nitty gritty of pricing. So let's spill the beans, shall we? When it comes to setting a price for your art, your community plays a major role. And these are the folks who truly connect with your work on a deeper level. And believe me, when your loyal followers value your art, they'll be more than willing to pay what it's worth. It's not just pigments and paints on a piece of paper. A famous painting hanging in a museum. Do you think its value comes solely from the raw material slapped onto the canvas? Absolutely not. There's so much more to it. And it's all about those intangible qualities, the creativity, the emotional expression, and the incredible story behind the artist and the artwork. All that contributes to the market value and the price. So let's do a little thought experiment. Imagine strolling into a store and finding two identical vases. One is priced at like a dollar, while the other one is $5,000. Now, which one would you imagine has some hidden flaw or defect? Most likely, you'd side-eye the cheap vase, wondering what's wrong with it. But the $5,000 one? You'd probably treat it with much more respect and be very, very careful when picking it up from the shelf, if you actually dared to do that. So perceived value is a game changer. When your artwork is priced just right, I feel like it sends a very powerful message to potential buyers. It tells them that your art and you are worth every penny because it's a creation born from your heart, your soul, and your experiences. And trust me, that kind of value commands attention and respect. So unless you're taping a banana to a wall with duct tape, extra bonus points if you got that inside joke, you're probably not in a position to charge $120,000. And if you are, stop watching this video right now and give me a call because I want your secret. So obviously we're not gonna come up with a random number. So where do you actually start? So this is where I put my counting glasses on. So if you aspire to make a living from your art, it's essential to consider an hourly rate that aligns with your financial goals. And it's time to think about the realistic income you wanna earn. We all wanna be millionaires, but seriously, realistically, what kind of income do you need to make a living, to quit your day job, or to save up for that um, Jaguar convertible? Am I projecting? From that, you'll be able to break it down into what a realistic hourly rate is. So let's say you wanna earn $80,000 a year. Do the math. Based on the work week of 40 hours a week, 52 work weeks a year, that would make your hourly rate... $38. $38. $38. Can you tell I'm not the best at math? You might not be able to charge your ideal rate right from the start. So begin by setting a reasonable hourly rate that allows you to cover your expenses and gradually work towards your target income. And that might be $5 an hour. That might be $20 an hour. Personally, I'm working towards the goal of making my hourly rate $300 to $500. Am I there? Absolutely not. Not even close. But I'm working towards it. As you gain experience, refine your skills, and build a strong reputation, you'll have the opportunity to increase your rates. And it definitely takes a change of perspective to allow yourself to think about it this way. Because as artists, we're kind of trained to undervalue and apologize for not giving away what we do for free. And there's a great book that I recommend called But Are You Making Any Money? by the author Marley Masher. And it's about a 30 to 45 minute read, but it really helps to clarify perspective about the nitty gritty of earning a living via your skill set, whether you're a painter, you're an artist, or something else within the creative world. 
Anyway, as I put the finishing touches on this piece, I'm adding some metallic accents, some Swarovski crystals, some sequins. We are getting so blinged out here, but like I said earlier, the kids are gonna love it. Let's personalize it for the client so they're getting a little extra bonus, and it's done. So I hope this video helped to illuminate a topic which is often a really uncomfortable one for many artists because we love to create, we love to give of ourselves to everyone around us, but in order to keep the fire burning and the lights turn on in the studio, it really is important to learn how to be your own advocate because if you don't, no one else will. I believe in you, now it's your turn to believe in yourself and get what I think you deserve. Let me know in the comments if any of this resonated with you, if you've ever sold your artwork or are planning on taking the leap. And I want you to know that I'm, I'm, I'm really here to cheer you on because it takes so much courage to put yourself out there. If you wanna learn the next steps on finding your artistic style, I suggest watching this video right here, which takes you through the steps to find your own artistic voice and your own art style. And in the meantime, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.